Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we are a webinar, a webcast, uh, online show, uh, whatever you like to call us. Um, we're here live online every um, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. If you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is then available on our website, and I will show you where that is um, at the end of today's show. I'll show you our website and where you can get all of our archives. Um, we will post the um, recording, um, any websites or anything that the, um, our presenters mention, and um, presentations. All of that will be available to you um, afterwards. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, mini training uh, training sessions, interviews, demos, uh, basically anything library related um, will be on the show. That's really our only criteria, that it's something to do with libraries, uh, something interesting libraries are doing, um, some new service you might be interested in. Um, some of our things are maybe seem a little out of the box, uh, not you know, when when you read the title of something, might not be sure why it's on there, but trust me, everything comes back to libraries in some way. Um, public libraries, academic libraries, museums, um, anything, um, school libraries. Uh, that's really our only criteria on the show. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes do presentations about services and programs and things we're doing here at the Library Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. On the line with us is Denise Davis, who's, um, good morning, Denise. Good morning. Good morning. And she is from the Morton James Public Library here in Nebraska City, Nebraska. Um, just a little... Uh, southeast of here where I am in Lincoln um, and Denise is the reference librarian there and um, I saw she, she did this presentation at our state library conference uh, oh gosh it was just last month wasn't it October yeah we're still in November for one more day <laughs> um, not December yet uh, and uh, I attended the session about their Reader of the Week program at our State Library Conference, and I thought it was just a really cool program they had done um, here, and so I invited her to come on the show and share it um, with, with our audience. Uh, so I will just hand over uh, to you, Denise, to go ahead and take it away with your presentation. Okay, well, thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you for this opportunity to share our Reader of the Week program with other people in this format. It was a pleasure to speak at the conference last month. Thank you for attending. And and again, I'm just grateful to be able to spread the word more for those who could not attend the conference. So, as you can see on your screens, this is about Reader of the Week. Um, accompanying the materials later will be just a quick one-page handout that I distributed at the conference with kind of the, the basic journalism questions about what this is, you know, who, what, why, when, where, and how. So you will have that um, available to you. And so, let me just get started with some basic explanation of the origin of this program that took place in our public library here in Nebraska City, the home of Arbor Day. So here are the basics. This is a new initiative for this year. We don't think of it as too new right now, but we were blessed last fall to have a brand new library director. He started September 1st of 2015, and one of the first things he suggested to us as a staff was to try something like this. He was brand new to our community, so at the same time he was introducing himself to, to everyone in the city, and so he approached the local newspaper, Nebraska City News Press, it's the oldest still published newspaper in Nebraska, Jay Sterling Morton, the founder of Arbor Day, was one of its first editors. And as you can see, Nebraska City was established in 1854, a few years before Nebraska became a state. So anyway, nowadays this paper is still published twice a week. Our city is the county seat of the county, so the circulation is fairly good for a town of our size. The community itself has roughly 7,500 inhabitants, and the circulation, as you can see, is, is roughly 10,000 because it's, it's the main paper for the whole county. The readers that we recruited for this initiative were approached by all library staff to answer questions for a weekly feature. So again, the director approached the newspaper editor as part of his getting to know him as he went around the community introducing himself, and he, the format was created with our input as a staff. 
we were all encouraged to recruit readers and yet one of us needed to be designated as a coordinator and that wound up being me which I was very happy to do I really enjoy this sort of thing so we talked about it all last fall the goal was to begin publication in January of this year which is what happened so some considerations that we took into account was that essentially this would be free advertisement for the library not merely sharing a reader of the week and so each time we had the feature in the paper we would try to tout something else about the library you see the example there on your screen but even more than that it wound up being driven by the way the reader shaped the answers to the questions we presented and you'll see those questions in a moment and then we built on their responses uh, kind of organically and that allowed us to tout different services at the same time we of course were naturally creating more awareness of reading for pleasure and a real concerted effort was made to feature a variety of readers and materials I had the title of this slide in quotes because this was literally word for word from one of the emails our director sent to all of us as a staff as we were going back and forth as to what this would look like as you can see we were encouraged to, to approach anyone in the way we were most comfortable it could be in or out of the library uh, we wanted essentially just to tap and capture that passion for reading that we know so many of our readers have and initially our director he didn't imagine much more than two to three hundred words and of course we would incur the, the rel we would include the relevant information about our reader and ideally with an picture of them too so there would be more awareness in the community of who these readers are I like how he how he was so uh, well as he even said they're passionate about it grab call right anyone <laughs> <laughs> that's right and essentially was that you know I think sometimes over the course of the year since I was the coordinator and I was just had it top of mind all the time you know I think some people when they saw me in the aisle of the grocery store or downtown on the street they kind of oh dear she's gonna ask me about reader of the week again <laughs> <laughs> so um, but you know that's that's part of the joy of being in a smaller community and, and trying to do something like this you really can uh, seize those moments that are just part of your day mm -hmm. and bring the library you know to top of mind so we had an introduction that we shared with our potential readers and this then was included in each week's reader of the week to kind of reiterate what we were doing in case someone was coming to the feature at midpoint hadn't seen the first issues so as you can see we obviously know a lot about our books but our focus with this feature indeed was the amazing readers and essentially that's really what we captured here and it was a joy each week to see what people came up with in their in their answers so again that's the word-for-word -word text from the introduction that we put to each column and this is also seen on the questions that we shared with our readers to answer and I couldn't help but note that Ranganathan, Ranganathan <laughs> different pronunciations the uh, esteemed Indian librarian right that uh, you learn about when you are studying librarianship he had his five laws the library science and I think from up above he would really be smiling about this initiative because I think in the course of implementing it we're carrying out all five of the laws of library science those being books are for use every reader his or her book which were obviously touting in this feature every book its reader it also is bringing to bear saving the time of the reader in that it becomes a form of readers advisory and it also shows the library as a growing organism I had to include this dated and yet still very timely cartoon from our beloved cartoonist at the Omaha World Herald Jeff Katerba if you can't read the fine print um, what is being conveyed here there is a, a couple obviously the woman on the couch the man is standing and the man is saying internet pirates stole my intellectual property Google is invading my privacy 
Facebook changed its format. I'm going to go read a book. And I placed this here because <laughs> as I was preparing this, it struck me that people might wonder, oh, this is such an analog kind of old school initiative. You know, in this day, why couldn't you just do an online version of this? And, you know, we did promote it on our Facebook page and it was mentioned on the website. However, um, what we enjoyed about this is that this really gave people an opportunity to reflect and, and create something about their own reading in a way that wasn't quick and that would evaporate quickly and uh, would stand the test of time as well. I think there's still a place for something like this in our digital world. Uh, we have many readers uh, who continue to subscribe to the newspaper. Granted, many don't. And this was not available in the online version of, of the newspaper, the Nebraska City News Press. So we did have some readers who, who came in to see our version of the newspaper to, to see the eventual copy that was produced. But again, to my point, I think there was a real place for something like this because we were really pleasantly surprised at the awareness in the community there has been for this and people kind of looking for it each week. Um, again, there are plenty of digital options out there and ways to, to learn about things regarding reading and books, but I think this had a great place in, in the paper and has really mm -hmm. had a followership. <laughs> yeah, and this thing that jumped out at me about your your this this project is that it was in the newspaper, the actual physical paper newspaper. And as you said earlier, you you, you they you, in spite of what the some people think and what people how people think things are going, people are still buying and reading the newspapers. They still have their their audience. Um, it's not go, it's not going it's not gone away at all. Well, in particular, I think yeah. Krista. Uh, in smaller community newspapers, such as the one we have in Nebraska City, um, oftentimes the editors are, are hungry and seeking more of the local content um, mm -hmm. because we do have columnists from you know either coast that fill some of the pages, and yet people love to see the local connection. That's why many people who still subscribe do subscribe in the first place because they can get world news and other news elsewhere. But the local, the local, you need the local, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this really provided that. Um, so it was a lot of fun, and I think uh, it has shown that there is definitely an interest in something of this nature in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. Now, you mentioned that there is an online version of the paper and that they didn't put this in that. Um, would that possibly be something for the future? I would hope that they um, would also put it in the online one. Right. The online one, as in most, I'm sure, is, is always evolving. And so um, if this is to continue, you, we could engage in that kind of conversation. Hmm. We haven't even broached it at this point, hmm. um, and I know subscribers to the newspaper can obviously access a different version online, but if you don't subscribe to the newspaper, as several of our readers don't, they still hmm. wouldn't be able to see it. Right, right. Um, yeah. So, yes, that is something to, to visit going forward, absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. so what were the questions that we asked of our readers? Um, these are the ones we came up with. These can be tweaked, of course, based on your community, should you like to try this. Uh, there are so many we can choose from, right? So we just approached it in this way, had just five questions. We didn't want too many because we wanted to make it very doable for busy people and not make it seem like a burdensome assignment. <laughs> and so, uh, and it would work for all ages this way too because as you'll see later, we had a real range of ages from young children to seasoned adults participate in this. So we wanted something short and sweet that would make it uh, comfortable and, and readily doable for everyone. So essentially we wanted to know what they'd read recently. It didn't necessarily have to be the very last book, especially if you're a very voracious reader. And then of course favorite author or authors, since so many of us have more than one, and why would they be a favorite author? And you know, essentially, you know, why do you why do you read? And of course that question we all debate with each other about have you ever had to give up on a book and it's interesting to see the different responses to that. And then lastly, of course, and this is where some reader's advisory comes into play as well, a book recommendation and, and why someone should read that book. And I have here with the asterisk, the library notes followed the reader's answers. I alluded to that earlier and that's where my work came in. Once I received a submission, I combed our catalog to see what we did or didn't have of the reader's uh, books that were mentioned, and then I would follow up with what we had that they mentioned, and if we did indeed have it, what formats it was in. This then was the opportunity to tout 
overdrive to tout our large print if that was the case or if we didn't have a book we could get it through ILL I think I have this in a future slide as well but the library notes portion really uh, took on a life of its own as well and could be as long if not longer sometimes than what the reader had actually written following the questions we gave them an opportunity to just kind of you know open-ended share with us whatever might not have been captured in those previous questions and some opted to answer it others didn't and then we broached the topic of including an image because we respect that not everybody is comfortable having their picture in the paper and there are a couple times when we did just use a book jacket or we covered a portion of the person's face and yet you could still see a book at play so it was kind of fun to do this people were real good sports but again we wanted to meet people in their comfort zone and not have them not do it just because they didn't want their picture in the paper um, so that's the way we addressed that and it gave the the column a visual so the logistics so essentially once our library director and the editor of this will be going forward in January and I was then tasked to be the coordinator I got the schedule with him or as I mentioned earlier our paper published twice a week so the decision was made to go preferably with Friday publication our paper is published on Tuesdays and Fridays and I just thought the Friday paper might have more readership in general with the weekend and so on and people might have more time to glance at the paper at end week with the weekend um, ahead of them so that's pretty much the schedule we tried to keep to it did have changes every once in a while depending on the news cycle but that was our basic approach that being said it was then necessary for me to have the copy to the newspaper by Wednesday morning today's Wednesday morning right so for example for this week I made sure I submitted everything yesterday because normally at this very time that we're having the encompass live today I'm I'm submitting the reader of the week to the paper and directly via email with the photo as an attachment and it was it was that easy I always followed it up with a phone call to the newspaper office to make sure the editor saw it in his inbox because we all know people are busy and and get sidetracked and may not always see an email in a timely fashion so I always made a point to follow up they would know that the inbox was there in time for their copy deadline big logistic is and why it's in red constantly recruiting right within the library obviously at the circulation desk as you were checking out someone some books that could be an opportunity beyond the library walls our director for example in January when we were just launching this he took my card several of my cards with him to Rotary and I'd written a little teaser on the back you know saying you too can be a reader of the week and he distributed those and for those of you who are familiar with Rotary many times you can promote something but you have to pay a little fine and so he did that and out of that we got maybe almost half a dozen readers over time and then any encounter or club meeting I might have and other staff members as well were always kind of mindful um, so as a staff to track who we had approached it was suggested that I keep a spreadsheet so that the left hand would know what the right hand was doing and that we wouldn't all be asking the same people and you know not knowing whether they said yes or not we didn't want to be coming to people from all sides so I maintained one. I'll show you a quick copy of that in a moment. Um, readers could answer either an old school long hand or by email. Several of our younger children do not yet have email, so it was very convenient for them to be able to simply write out their answers um, on the question sheet. So we did make both formats available. And then I did give updates at our staff meetings. Our staff meets every week, so it's very easy to do so and then I would also supplement those in-person updates with email uh, who's in the pipeline any photos I might still need if someone waits on one of those individuals they could take the picture at the cert desk etc I also made a point from the very beginning since this is the library's transform and that of course was the theme of the conference um, to provide the newspaper with all of ALA's 
libraries transform graphics with the request that they use them on a space available basis. And I was very pleased with how they, they did indeed use them. I didn't want to impose that on them and, and so on. I just wanted them to be able to have that resource at times when they could use the 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 space in the paper. Well, that's, that's see, nice. Yeah, that's a nice connection. Yes. Yeah. That's already like, uh, it's great that ALA provides for, for this um, promotion they're doing. Um, all the all the copy for it and the and the graphics are already ready to go and just put into somebody's a newspaper or a, a, a newsletter wherever. It was so convenient. Yes, yeah. you know, I just sent them the links from ALA and um, different sizes, you know, and and all the options they would have, and I was very very pleased with how they they did put them into use. And as you'll see, Snoopy is there. Yeah. I also wanted that to be touted during September, uh, mm -hmm. and they, they did that as well. The library card sign up was done. With, yes. Yep. The, the <laughs> big character, yep. Yes. <laughs> so they went to town with that. It was really nice. great to see. Okay. I mentioned the library notes uh, before, so here is just kind of uh, listed out. Um, and in addition to touting services such as the ILL and the Overdrive, I was also able then to highlight special weeks, such as National Library Week, our book club, summer reading programs, and you just saw the Snoopy, so obviously in September we included National Library Card Sign-Up Month. And so I was just always aware of the calendar when we did this. You know, if there was a, a special event or date in library land coming up that coincided with the Reader of the Week publish, publication, then I, I made sure to to include that and or even just something specific to our library that was happening like this week's reader of the week will give a final shout out and paragraph to our holiday party that will be this Saturday so that goes back to the reader of the week being a free advertisement because since the feature ended each week with, with this library notes portion I could essentially plug into that any paragraph any any words that I, I wanted, and they, they never edited it. So um, I didn't recognize that could change from paper to paper, but we were very fortunate that our, our newspaper really liked this, and they just pretty much copy and pasted everything I sent them. There wasn't much editing. Okay, so the spreadsheet I mentioned, um, I realize this slide isn't um, probably very easy to read, but you get the general idea. It was just very basic. Um, obviously, I've left the name column blank, but I wanted to kind of keep track of which staff members had approached who, any miscellaneous information that might be useful to know. Um, next to that, it's kind of cut off, but is the word photo for whether or not we still need the photo. Down towards the bottom, you'll see an orange and red square that says need. <laughs> I still needed the photo for that individual. And then the week they'd be published. And you'll see a couple notations there. Um, the person in, in May, it happened to be Children's Book Week, so I definitely made sure I was featuring a, a young reader that week. Um, and then if there was a change in publication, for example, instead of a Friday, it wound up being on a Tuesday because of some new cycle event or the paper needing more space for something else, I make note of that on the spreadsheet too. So this was something just to help me kind of keep track. The yellow always, you know, those are people very close to being ready. I maybe just needed the photo as you see there. The people in white were had been approached but had not followed up in any way or we maybe needed to give them a gentle nudge. The people in green have already been published. So it gave me a very quick visual and the rest of the staff too because I kept this on the staff shared folder uh, per my colleague's suggestion so everyone could look at that at any time to see what the status was of any given reader. And to date, um, uh, we have about 85 people on this spreadsheet. We haven't had that many readers, of course, but it just shows who we did try to approach and um, I think that's great. Right now this week we'll be at almost number 40. And uh, yes, we began in January, so a few weeks were missed here and there for different things, but it, it really wound up being a, a nice critical mass of, of readers. Now, I'm sure you're all eager to see who are these readers that we've been featuring the whole year long. So it did begin in January, so bring on the new year with this new initiative. And very appropriately, our library director who suggested this initiative started us out with plenty of books in hand. 
Um, he was followed by one of our great library volunteers, and she's demonstrating the kind of uh, option to have a book face. And then on the same month, we had one of our local officials. You'll notice it says City Commissioner. Nebraska City is one of the, or the only, I think, municipality in the state of Nebraska that continues to operate with the City Commission form of government rather than just a strict City Council. So we were very grateful to have her participate as well. And you may note that she's holding up a biography of none other than J. Sterling Morton, founder of Arbor Day. That brings us then to February, a shorter month, and we were still kind of spinning our wheels a little bit. So we were just published twice in that month, both very engaged members of our community who really promote and support the library in a number of ways. So I was really delighted that they came forward, one's holding up a CD, the other a book. March really got going, which was kind of appropriate, a special month for Nebraska, right, since that's the month we celebrate our state's birthday. Nice variety in this month from uh, a young homeschooled student, college president, and a pair of siblings. You'll notice there the One Book, One Nebraska was touted this month. One of our readers wanted to really mention it. However, she did not want her picture in the paper. so. We put the, the cover of the Meaning of Names, and again, that's especially appropriate given that it's been the One Book, One Nebraska for this year. And some, as a side note, the author, Karen Shoemaker, actually worked on the book, or at least a portion of it, while she was in Nebraska City. We are blessed in our community to have the Kimmel Harding Nelson Arts Center. It's a place where art, artists can come and be in residence from anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. And we have an ongoing treasure trove of artists in our community all, all year long, thanks to this beautiful facility. And it just happens to be two blocks from our library. So we often meet the residents in the library and they can use our resources. And so it's, again, kind of extra neat that her book has been featured in our Reader of the Week initiative. So April, as we all know, that is golden to we in library land, right, for National Library Week. So we definitely made mention of this. And by this point, we're about three months into the project, right? And the newspaper must have been really noticing some momentum um, because right around this time they asked if, in addition to doing this Reader of the Week, wouldn't it would we be interested in also sharing with their readers more about us? They in turn wanted to, if you will, profile the librarians. So that was a nice unexpected outcome of taking this initiative of Reader of the Week. So in concert with it being National Library Week, they put this in the paper and this photo of all of us was on a page together with many of the library transforms graphics. And in this caption below the photo of all of us, they mentioned that going forward in the weeks to come, there would be a profile about each of us in the paper. So this was the beginning of a little series to complement the reader of the week, highlighting those of us who are in the library meeting all the fantastic readers. We also had this on display during National Library Week. Many of you may recognize the library's transformed statements and the because and the speech bubbles and so on. And we did have some things in there. I just had taken this, this image when it first went up and had had anything in it yet. And we continued to have the bookmarks and so on, on at the circulation desk and the questions circulated throughout the library for people to pick up or at least to read. So still yet within the month of April, they began the profiles of each of us, building on what had started in National Library Week. And as you can see on the left, below our director's profile, they inserted, get your library card today. And I had not even sent that to them. They, they took that upon themselves to put that in there. So again, another example of the newspaper 
helping promote the library <laughs> um, as a result of, of this project. This was April 29th, so we're still in the month of April. Meeting more of the library staff. And in April, I'd be remiss being from Nebraska City if I didn't mention Arbor Day. Now, mind you, this was not our Reader of the Week. However, we were able to use another venue, another approach with which to publicize Reader of the Week, which is why I include this slide here. You'll notice all of us holding library, well, a couple of us holding the library transforms because we truly did for one day in April. Arbor Day in Nebraska falls on the last Friday of the month. There's always a huge celebration here in Nebraska City all weekend long. A parade is held on the Saturday. This year was April 30th. So you see there below the Morton James on Main, it says April 30th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, for those few hours that one day, our brick and mortar library, two or three blocks away, closed for the day so that we could be directly on Main on the parade route for Arbor Day and transform our library for a day. Kind of a pop-up library idea, but if you'd like to know more about this in detail, myself and another colleague wrote an article in the August issue of Nebraska Libraries that gives the whole process of how this came about. But for today's purposes, I wanted to include it here as another example of how we could tout Reader of the Week in the course of this initiative and this again was three months in it was kind of on the heels of, of National Library Week in April we had some good momentum the reason it says all book no bite is that the theme of Arbor Day this year created by the local tourism board was all bark no bite so we never miss an opportunity for a pun so we went to work with that and created all book no bite and the beautiful murals you see are on the windows of an empty pharmacy that we were lent for the day free of charge and the murals themselves were painted pro bono by a local very talented artist who's even been featured on TV here in Nebraska and so we just had a, a ball transforming our library and its services for one day in April. I was going to say I liked that know, whole that whole theme there the, the all book no bite. <laughs> You know, and it really turned out well. It, the space was great. We were able to put so much in there. We had a mini selection of our DVDs. Uh, our local internet service provider got us hooked up. We were able to check out items if people wanted. We even opened up a new library account or two. We had a couple telescopes there that people could see because we now lent out telescopes. But I think one of the greatest things was it wasn't only the library there for the day. We had enough space that we invited other local entities such as a church youth group, uh, Southeast Community College, which was just in the process of opening a learning center across the street, um, and some other folks to have tables and have spaces with us within that building for just the day. And this was right on the parade route. It was one of the main intersections. Um, as you can see, a great window space to promote our presence there. And we had nearly 400 people come through that day, many, many more than we would have had on a Saturday off the parade route um, for Arbor Day. So it was a success by any measure. Yeah, we definitely. were just delighted nice. <laughs> to be able and you know we had the Reader of the Week notebook out there and I was able to promote that a little bit. So it was all part of the mix. But I just wanted to share that. I thought it was kind of a neat <laughs> initiative as well. So that brings us into May, which has Children's Book Week. So I tried to have a special promotion for Reader of Week that month directed to the children. And so in the children's library, I had this flyer or a, an image of it to encourage the children to ask the librarian about it. And as you can see, we featured um, one of our younger readers, second grader, who is a Daisy Meadows fan, as so many second grade girls are. And also in that month, we had a middle schooler and then a substitute teacher. Also in May, it was my turn, I guess, to be featured. <laughs> uh, so there I am. But I also wanted to show this particular piece because it's a great example of the trifecta that we wound up getting sometimes in the paper. I mean, on this date, between uh, the profile, 
the reader of the week, which is cut off, but you can see it on the right side, together with the new book list that the newspaper continues to publish each month, we essentially had a whole page of the newspaper on this particular date. Um, previously, we would send the newspaper our, our new book list each month. We no longer need to do that because they can simply go to our catalog and download it. And so they, we never really know when they're going to put it in. Obviously, it's as close to the beginning of a month as possible. As you can see, this was May 6th, and um, they put in everything from you know the DVDs and paperbacks and teen fiction that you see there to nonfiction CDs, children's books. It's all listed title by title in the paper. Um, so on this particular day, without our knowing it, everything was together in one place. June. I've been wanting for months to, to feature one of our homebound patrons because we do continue that service here in our community and everyone gets their Morton James Public Library book bag delivered to them where they live, either in a assisted living facility or private residence. So we're very pleased to be able to give that service and have one of them be one of our readers of the week. Also a, a local high schooler and one of our pastors. He's actually one of the individuals who shared the space with us at the Arbor Day pop-up library. And in June, it was kind of good timing because we were on the cusp of beginning the summer reading program. The paper placed in June the profiles of the children's librarians. And again, this was not planned. That's just kind of the, the neat organic way this has all evolved. And um, Sue Bennett, our children's librarian, was the only one fortunate enough to be featured in color, as you can see there. It was extra appropriate since she's got Clifford the Red Dog there in hand as she um, talks about promoting summer reading. And so, of course, in July, everyone is in full throttle for summer reading. We were able to feature our summer intern who worked with us all last summer, helping not only summer reading, but a number of other projects here in the library. The fifth grader pictured is showing one of the prizes she won for participating in the summer reading program. magic. I have to include this. There's a great story to this. This young man is holding, some of you may be familiar with, the Tarbell Course of Magic. It's an eight volume kind of encyclopedia of magic tricks. And I know there were a few other libraries in Nebraska and Iowa this summer who had this magician and Miss Kitty come and give a magic show as part of the summer reading programming. And he did indeed come to Nebraska City and this young man was already ready, if you will, to be a reader of the week. I had his submission. I'd already talked with him. I already knew him. And he came to the magic show. And I learned of his interest in magic. So I went to the stacks and grabbed all of these books. And he showed them to the magician and the magician was just amazed. I tell you, it was priceless to see the reaction of, of the magician that a library of our size would have the full set of this magic course. Well, almost full. I'll explain that in a moment. However, he said, to his knowledge, very few public libraries of our size had all these. And this young budding magician, our reader of the week, had been using them. We had seven out of the eight volumes. And as a result of learning all this and so on, we, this very summer, we were able to acquire the eighth and final volume of the Tarbell Course of Magic. So I put magic there because it was truly magical how I was able to build on my awareness of the interest of this young reader of the week because of the summer reading program and also mainly because of doing the reader of the week initiative in the first place. Um, had that not been ongoing, I might not have seen the possibility to create this opportunity. And they have been in touch now. Uh, the young reader sent the magician a thank you. The magician, in turn, sent him a letter back saying, I'm available anytime you would need some advice. So um, again, the magic of connecting readers. And that was an outcome of the Reader of the Week. So I wanted to share that little anecdote with all of you. So August, getting kind of into back to school mode. So we've got all 
younger readers shown here. The ones on the left and right are avid readers who were also prize winners in the summer reading program. Happy September. So very fitting that we have an academic librarian as a reader of the week. The high school freshman who's also a Boy Scout is actually holding up a title he found in our used book sale. We have, as so many public libraries do, we have an ongoing used book sale now. We have a, a regular used book store plus a few tables spread out throughout the library that people can always find new readings from and he happened to find one and then that was the photo published in the newspaper. And we finally had the opportunity to also include one of our library board members as a reader. September, of course, we all know is National Library Card Sign-Up Month, so we touted that, obviously. We were also present at our local farmer's market in September. We've been doing that for a couple of years now. It usually is the last or next to last rendition of the farmer's market for the for the year and we make ourselves present there and have a whole table where people can um, learn more about the library and we usually have some books there for people to take as our giveaway and it's just an, another opportunity to be out in the community outside the library promoting what we do. October, you saw in January we featured our library director and in October we featured another staff member as well as a high schooler and one of our local business women. Regina has a great bed and breakfast. If any of you have visited Nebraska City, you may recognize this, this talented innkeeper. We also had our own October surprise. <laughs> I know that was a phrase in the news a lot this fall with the presidential election. Um, in our community, the local tourism launched their own initiative this fall to have a scarecrow contest. And so we as the library staff thought we should participate as well, and we did. And you'll see a rather muted image of our scarecrow in a moment. However, um, what occurred was that we needed to use the scarecrow as a reader one week, kind of a substitute reader of the week. And this was our October surprise. We didn't see this coming. And so the editor's note I've placed here verbatim, and they mention how we have been providing a reader of the week each, each week on Friday and that this week was a bit of a departure because our director talks about some vandalism. Now, I don't have the whole column here, but essentially what happened was we had an entry in this scarecrow contest. I apologize that the image didn't scan better, but on the far left, you can see the likeness of a librarian, if you will. That's our librarian scarecrow on the far left. We had a mannequin for her head and she was surrounded by books and our entry was called Story Time in the Pumpkin Patch because the Halloweener book is what she was holding in her hands and then pumpkins, you can see just kind of the top of the pumpkins barely there at her feet. The painted pumpkins were her children, were the readers attending Story Time in the Pumpkin Patch. Hmm. So it was, it was really cute and the, she was underneath a tree in front of our library. We laminated the covers of Halloween books and had them hanging from the tree, you know, kind of descending upon the pumpkins in the library, and it was really, really well done. And so we had that out a couple of weeks in October. This would have been also too during the Nebraska Library Association conference when I presented on October 20th. Well, lo and behold, a week or so later, we unfortunately discovered that the librarian had been beheaded. Someone had vandalized and taken her head over the weekend. So Rasmus, our director, wrote a piece for the library, and that's what the editor was referring to, that it was a departure that week for Reader of the Week. We kind of had a missing Reader of the Week, if you will. <laughs> so that was our October surprise, and it must have garnered a little bit of sympathy vote, although I think she was a great entry to begin with. And so the library got second place in the whole community. There probably were about 30 scarecrows all around Nebraska City. Um, and we're pictured here with the representatives from the tourism office all holding books and kind of covering up where the missing head would be. Um, they also too bad that that happened. <laughs> but again, you know, it was we kind of tried to, to leverage it and turn mm -hmm. it into a uh, promotion, but in a, in a good way, too. I mean, what our director wrote was not, you know, it was kind of in a humorous vein. It was saying, you know, please just 
just like our books, just just bring it back. We're not going to scold or judge. You know, we just would like things returned. We we never did see the the head again, but. I do think there was a lot of appreciation, and out of all the scarecrows, we did get second place. And very fittingly, today on our director's last day here in Nebraska City, we're enjoying our prize. They're bringing us some uh, apple donuts and some some coffee and cider. So it'll be an appropriate way to uh, send off our our director mm-hmm. as he yeah. begins the new adventure, and also kind of celebrate what we what we did together here. Because that was a reader of the week. <laughs> there was not a, a human being that particular week. Today being the last day of November, we, we have had several in, in November, as you'll notice. It's pictured here. We have a plethora of, of teachers, as many communities, right? Retired teachers, current teachers. Um, they're usually avid readers, and it, it just is kind of a natural. They would be very amenable to participating in this initiative. Um, in the upper left, we have a retired English teacher. She's holding some selections from the Nebraska 150 list. For those of you attending outside of Nebraska, next year is Nebraska's 150th birthday, our sequicentennial. And so one of the initiatives is Nebraska 150 Books. A committee of librarians and teachers and others selected 150 titles that either were written by someone from Nebraska or are set in Nebraska. There has to be a Nebraska connection in some way. And so our libraries made it a real effort to acquire uh, a great majority of those books. I think we're up to about 130 now. And so this retired teacher is shown with some of those books and the bookmark Read Nebraska Books. Um, there's a reading challenge that goes with that. So we'll be really promoting that with the new year. Nebraska's 150th is on March 1st. And then you see the other teachers here for November. And that brings us already to December, which these are forthcoming. These obviously haven't been published yet, but these are some that I have in the in the pipeline for next month. And then near the circulation desk, I always keep a Readers of the Week portion of a bulletin board so that people coming into the library just casually can kind of see previous examples. And it's an additional incitement to um, encourage them to be considered. Um, the example on the right you'll notice was another time that the Reader of the Week coincided with the publication of some of our new titles where it says more important James Library list on the bottom right. And you'll notice we also get books in Spanish. That first category says libros en español. So that's neat to see. And the placement of Reader of the Week was never the same in the paper. You know, sometimes it was on page two, other times it might have been below the fold on Section B. Um, one time, I think I have it here, we actually had it on the front page and it had a more prominent. Another thing I did, I had a notebook which showed at NLA and people were welcome to look through it. I've just taken an image for today's purposes because I obviously can't show you the whole notebook. But um, this is another way we tried to entice people to consider being a reader of the week themselves. So this is what we have kept behind the readers, rather the circulation desk this whole year. Um, this is the binder that I have that contains photocopies of all previous readers of the week, as well as the equivalent of that week's column in Newsbank. That's what you see on the right. So this particular example is the one that was actually on the front page of our paper. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the newspaper really didn't ever edit whatever I sent them. And you may recall in our director's initial email to us, he said maybe two to three hundred words max, you know, not a novel. But the average, as you'll see in a later slide of most of these, once I added my library notes portion, was usually over 500 words. Um, and maybe you know, more many times. And again, the, the newspaper was most generous in, in pretty much putting anything I sent them into the paper. OK, so this speaks to what I just showed you. This was an unexpected bonus that I hadn't really considered how all this would be indexed in Newsbank as a result of doing this. So if you were to simply go into Newsbank, and select the Nebraska City News Press as your publication and enter Reader of the Week as your headline, you would see, I think it's up to about 40 results now. 
and then you get an idea of the word count, which is where I came up with my averages, as well as the readability. This might be slightly different now. They have not yet indexed my latest submissions. I think it, right now it's going through November uh, 4th, so I don't have the, the most recent Reader of the Weeks incorporated here, but um, I wouldn't expect it to change a great deal. And this is just another visual way to, to see how the breakdown was. So there was a um, preponderance of you know, being on the higher reading level, the majority of them, or more than half. Some other bonuses, and I know we're getting short on time here, but again, as you've kind of heard examples already, it's been a catalyst for promotion. Um, I think it was in March or April, I had a call from a woman in California in her 80s born and raised here in Nebraska City, hasn't lived here for years. Nonetheless, she continues to subscribe to the newspaper. And this is one thing I think that we should be mindful of, that there are people in other parts of the country for whom this may be the main way they can keep in touch with what's going on in their hometown if they've been gone for a long time. And she has wound up donating some things to us. And who knows where else that may lead? And who knows who, who, knows who else is out there across the country reading our paper in analog, you know, print form and seeing all this extra content that's library driven and library, what ramifications could that have going forward for additional donations or interest? You just never know, right? Um, the Boy Scout reader that you saw pictured is considering the library as one of his, or is his Eagle Scout project. I don't know where that is right now, but at least we're on his radar for being a strong candidate for his Eagle Scout project. You heard about the budding magician, and just in general, then you know the increased conversations about reading throughout the community. So that's all I have for today. I'd be happy to entertain questions, Krista, if there are any that have come forward. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, I'll be making my my quick handout available too, and the things that you send out later. Thank you so much. It's been a real joy to talk about this, and I hope uh, people do consider doing. It. I know. A, at least one example so far since the conference of a librarian in a small Nebraska community who's already approached her editor and they will start doing this very same initiative in January. So I'm, I'm nice. pleased to, to know that it, it's you know going to take off somewhere else as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you, Denise. Um, anyone have any questions? Um, type them into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and I can pass them on. Um, nobody had any questions while you were talking, no, um, but that's okay. Um, if you do have any, um, put them in now. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I especially liked um, with your different readers, um, the the older woman in the, the wheelchair, the homebound service. Um, mm -hmm. Love how there's a way, I mean, thinking about this mainly is, is showing, you know, um, Promoting the books we have, promoting you know, showing all the different people that that use the library, but also a, a sly way also of the here services that we offer that you might not right. be aware of. That this is a thing that you know, if you are one of those people getting just the newspaper at home locally, of course, that this might be something you want to um, look into for yourself. The, the homebound delivery service. Right, and the, and the interlibrary loan too, because obviously sometimes the titles people mention we didn't have. Right. And so when I would do my usual, okay, well you can get this book, you know, that we have two copies in print, we have the DVDs. Sometimes I couldn't say that, so then I would say, well, we can get this for you through our interlibrary loan service. Mm -hmm. So I and just that's... tried to leverage um, their responses any way I could, mm -hmm. and still promote something about the library. And that's a just as good a way of getting these books as as having the. Um... The ones you actually own, that's a service the library offers, is being able to get books that, that aren't there. Absolutely. And people have to understand that that's a thing and it's okay. <laughs> One thing I would like I, to add, um, yeah. we are, when our director promoted this, he said, let's try this for a year. And as you know, we're approaching that year period. And so, and we will be getting a new director as well. So, um, we probably won't continue this, and we've already let the newspaper know on a weekly basis. However, we've enjoyed it so much that what we might try is is a adaptation of that, and it wouldn't need to be called Reader of the Week. It could be, it could be called, for example, Meet a Reader, and that mm -hmm. way you're not tied to having to do it each week. And also with the approaching Nebraska 150 and all the books we have oh, yeah. about that, the thought is that we could promote 
people who are reading different titles and promote that collection through Meet a Reader. Mm -hmm. So that will likely be the, the future rendition of this initiative for 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, but Reader of the Week was certainly a great way to start for 2016. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad that it was such a popular, such such a success. Because like you said, going into something brand new like this, and that's a good th a good lesson to learn from this as well. You know, try something new, and it, it might be a huge success. Uh, who knows this other town doing it? Whether it will be as popular there, um, I can't imagine it's a bad thing finding out you know what people are reading. I think the hardest part is probably convincing the people to. <laughs> become one of your that readers. Is, that is, you know, and as you can see, we tried to encourage people and every week we put paper, we, we honestly didn't have anybody come up to us and say, oh, can I be a reader of the week? Uh, it essentially was we had to approach them. Yeah, but having those pre-made questions and the things, I know I saw that when the handouts that you had at the conference was I think, you know, very easy. You know, just fill in the blank, answer these questions, boom. Yeah. And the suggestion was made, you know, we could have done it on the street, we could have interviewed people with a microphone and so on. However, mm -hmm. what we liked about this was the the pause for reflection. Right, they can that think writing about allows. what they to say, yeah. Definitely. All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody's got any urgent questions to ask you right away. Um, but that's fine. Um, if anybody does have any questions, of course, you can contact Denise at the uh, Martin James Public Library um, and with anything else. And as you said, she'll have a handout that she did have at the session that will be available as well. Um, so thank you so much, Denise. Um, I was glad to have you on the show. Like I said, I did attend this session at our state conference. and I just thought it was a, a really – just a great way of promoting the library and, and getting – not just using your own, using use your your readers to promote what you do. That's that's the best thing. Like a word of mouth. That's that's those are your your best you know uh, ways of spreading the word. Is word of mouth sometimes. That's right. Library is a of that. Work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you yeah. very very much for this yeah. opportunity. I really have and, enjoyed it, and I again mm -hmm. encourage anyone anytime. It can be months from now. Doesn't need to be immediate. Um, Use that email and, and let me know how I can be of assistance. Yeah. And say, you know, bye to Rasmus, the library director, as you mentioned, is, you know, he's on his way. He's going, well, he's still going to be here in Nebraska, but working in Iowa now. Um, I didn't realize today was his last day. Oh, well. Yes. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that initiative that he had, you know, before, yeah. or it's kind of a book day on his last day we're able to mm -hmm. further tout reader of the week yeah <laughs> i'm glad yes definitely all right so thank you very much Denise. i'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen now from yours thank you everyone and wrap up for today so as i said we do um record the show and this show um is being recorded right now um this is our encompass live website um what's great is you can just go to uh, google any of your search engines of choice and type in encompass live and we come up first uh, uh, these are upcoming shows, but I want to show you first. Here's where our archive sessions are. There's a link right beneath the list of all of the uh, upcoming shows, and this just has all of our previous ones um, where we will have a link to the recording, any handouts or presentations, or if there's any on um, this one, he just had two different presentation uh, handouts that went along with last week's recording. So um, later today, this recording could be ready and, and ready to go. It just take, it depends on how long it takes YouTube to process everything. Um, and you'll be able to go watch it over here. I'll let you all know when it's ready. Uh, hope you'll, uh, so that will wrap, we'll wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is technology classes at your library. Uh, this is a session, also one that I attended at a different library conference, the Iowa uh, Library Association in conference last, last month. Um, Jen Eilers at the Iowa City Public Library has done a great job in promoting their technology classes that they teach. Um, it's been a huge success there, and so I've invited her to come on the show remotely to tell us about how she's done that there. So definitely do uh, sign up for that class next week and any of our other ones you see coming up here. Um, we are on um, Facebook, and Compass Live does have a Facebook page, so if you click on that, you will get our Facebook page over here, where I post reminders of what's coming up. Um, here's a reminder to log in for today's show, when the recordings are available, I post on here. So if you are a big uh, Facebook user, definitely give us a like over there um, to keep up with what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>